Hi, I'm Scott. Today I'm going to show you how to transfer this living room space on Dad It Yourself. So you saw me put glue on here. This is an inch and a half with a quarter inch reveal on the back side. I used a piece of quarter inch hardboard I had as my spacer. And that actually also leaves me a half inch back here, which is perfect for my door slides. So on the center divider, it's all about centering the style. And then on this outboard side against the wall, I'm gonna check the distance, but I'm probably gonna end up scribing it to the wall. Okay, so last rail is the drawer rail. Uh, I have these four and a half inch blocks here I put in for the spacing to make sure that's square. And then on the back of this rail, I did put a pocket hole screw. Uh, the key on this one is in the center. You wanna offset your pocket hole so you're not driving two screws into the end of each other. All right, so I have this OSB left over from when I tore my shop apart. It's half inch, and I'm gonna use this as the sub base for the countertops instead of ripping up a $40 piece of three quarter plywood. So I just need to cut this into roughly 21 and three quarter inch lengths, and then lay it on the top as the sub base, and then I have a really nice piece of plywood that I'll be using as the top. Well, here we are at the end of day two. That cabinet is complete, painted, face frame, and the first sub top is on. And same with the second one. Mom at Yourself did a really good job of painting those today. Two coats, bare, ultra, premium, plus, super duper, whatever. Got all the baseboards in with the toe kick. It's really good, came out nice. And then, so we're gonna paint this eggshell white. This is gloss, this is gonna be eggshell. And then we're gonna put a mantle on here. We're still arguing about the size of that mantle, but you'll see that probably in the next day or so. Hey, good morning, next day here. Got the plywood in the shop because it is raining. Big surprise, Puget Sound, rain, what? Okay, so this huge piece of plywood in my little teeny shop, four by eight sheet of plywood in a 10 by 20 shop. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down to rough size for the countertops, and then I'll go ahead and bring it inside and start scribing it so it fits against the walls. I got some really neat bows in the walls and not so, so straight edges. Uh, so I wanna fit that as best I can. Let's get started. So scribing is just a matter of putting the piece in place, taking a compass, cutting it along the wall, and in this case, this one has a nice little bow right here in the middle. And then once I have a line, I just take my belt sander and slowly sand up to that line, and we'll just keep tuning it in and work our way around to all four sides, or all three sides.
Okay, here's a little detail I want to show you. If you'll notice right here, I kind of back cut this. When I'm using the jigsaw to come down here, I put a little tilt on it to back cut it because you just want this leading edge up here to touch the wall and you don't want this to interfere. And then I just follow that with the belt sander. And the blue tape here is just to help with chip out and a nice clean line that I can see. So I got these all scribed in. Not perfect, but as long as they're within an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth, then I can cover that with caulk. This was kind of interesting. You can't really see it, but that's an angle right there. Move over to this one. Got that one all scribed in. Okay. All right, so we got to put some glue on these, uh, put them down with 23 gauge pin nails, and then a face frame on the countertop, and then let mom it yourself take care of it with the paintbrush. Okay, last phase of construction, putting on a face frame using Quick and Thick from Typebond for a couple of reasons. One, it dries in 15 minutes and mom it yourself wants to get painting. And two, I ran out of Typebond 3. Good morning. Everything today is all about drawers and doors. I've got these 1x4 common boards and I'm going to build my drawer boxes today uh, mimicking what I already have in my kitchen. Nothing special, just four sides and a face frame. Uh, the difference between these and what I have in my kitchen is my kitchens are made out of MDF and flame spray with pretty much stickers on them. These are all going to be hardwood drawers with pine boxes and poplar fronts. Let's get started on building these boxes. So now that I got these planed all down to a half inch, I'm going to cut them into their final lengths. Uh, trying to avoid some of these knots where I can, especially the ones on the edges. Uh, I have about 20 inches of excess in these boards for each drawer, so I can probably work around that. I'm going to use the motor, miter saw to do that. All right, so I have this four by eight sheet of quarter inch plywood here, and this was only 23 bucks. Had I bought two by two panels for all the drawer bottoms and door faces, I would have paid $54. So this is definitely the way to go if you need a bulk and you have the ability to cut it yourself. And I have the ability to cut it myself. So let me go ahead and cut out all the drawer bottoms first, and then once I get to door building, I'll cut the door faces out of whatever's left of this. So all my pieces have been cut and I sanded everything to 150 grit on the inside. It'll be a lot easier to sand it before I put them together. My bottom panels, all my sides, fronts and backs, let's go ahead and assemble some drawers. So I'm just going to use butt joints on these with 18 gauge, inch and a quarter brads and type bond quick and thick because like yesterday I'm still out of type bond 3. Let's go ahead and build them.
Okay, so I have two of the four drawers up here. They came out really well. I'm going to coat them with two coats of water-based clear just to give them some protection in case something gets spilled in them or whatever. And then they'll be ready for install. Hey, so while I'm waiting for the drawers to dry out in the garage, I'm uh, going to install the hardware. I got these 20-inch Everbuilts from Home Depot. I could have gone with metal slides, but I decided to go with these because literally this is what I have in my whole house. My bathrooms, my kitchen, they all have these drawer slides. Uh, really simple. They come in even numbers. Uh, 10, 12, 14, 16, 20, 22. Um, my cabinet's actually 21 inches deep. You say to yourself, well, how's that going to work? Well, the cool part is, is they have these neat little back brackets that snap on there and you have about an inch and a half of play from the end of the bracket to the back wall where you can adjust that for the support in the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and install those right now. Okay. Now it's just a matter of putting the rest of the screws in, get it all nice and tight. Okay, so here's the drawer bottom. Here's the drawer rails. Pretty much, come on the bottom. Wheels on the back. Easy as that. So, mommy yourself uh, got all the paint matched up. Uh, trimmed in, cleaned up. Looks super sweet. All right, so one of the main reasons for the project was to move a fish tank, not this one, over to here. So this is a 75. We're going to put a 55 there. And then we're going to remove this TV stand, fish tank stand, whatever you want to call it, that I built probably eight years ago. And that's going to free up this whole room so we can move the couch over to this side and put my chair on that side of the room. So let's go ahead and put the new fish tank in, get it filled up, and maybe get some fish moved over tonight. by six which is actually only five and a half inches wide of poplar that I'm going to use for the drawer faces. This is going to get painted. Uh, I'm going to cut it to rough lengths and then I'm going to rip those to the final width which is about five and an eighth. This has a slight bevel on the top and the bottom and it's square on the ends and then it has a round over on the face as the detail. All right let's do it. So I have the table saw set up to 15 degrees, cut that top and lower bevel on the drawer faces. Let's go ahead and get that done. So 
So I have a 3 8 round over in here and I've got the, my fence set up to give me my distance and that will give me this round over detail right here with this little shoulder. So let's run those. Remember, always run the end grain first and then the side grain second. So if there's any blowout, the router will take care of that. All right, so I sanded these all down to 120 with the orbital and then knocked down all the edges with this sanding sponge and these are ready for paint. All right, so I have some one by three poplar here, which is actually one by two and a half. This is gonna be the rails and the styles of the doors. I'm gonna start by batching out all the styles and rails to rough lengths and then I'll rip that to width and then we'll start milling all the details like the bevels and the roundovers and the rabbits for the door pan. All right, so all my milling's done. I got my uh, strap clamp set up here. And I'm gonna use Type Bond Thick and Quick because I only have two strap clamps and I wanna get these under glue and start working on the panels today. This glue's clear and in 15 minutes. So we're gonna use this. And we'll let these dry overnight and Mama Yourself will do her magic with them. So Mama Yourself did a really great job painting these doors front and back. Now it's time to put in the European style hinges. I got these hinges right here from Amazon. I'll put a link to them in the description. And I'm using this Craig jig with the 35 millimeter
with the details here. But literally, I'm going to take this scrap of plywood and I'm going to make a box that's 72 and 3 quarters of an inch long, 8 inches deep, and 2 inches tall. And that's going to become the mantle. Okay, last step of the project. Gotta put the floating shelves up. So those signify where the studs are, over there as well. And then that one and that one are 16 inches, 16 inches, and then another 16 inches from the ceiling. And that's where the shelves are gonna go left to right there, four feet wide. And that will give me enough room if I have to pull this pump out or if I have to do some work on this fish tank. See the fishies, there's fishies. All right, so here's the shelves. I'm gonna open them up in a second, and I will have a link to Amazon down below in the comments if you're interested in getting some of these for yourself. They're white, they're two inches by four feet, and they pretty much look like the profile of that mantle cap, which is now painted. Came out really nice. All right, let's open these boxes and get these installed. Well, looks pretty cut and dry. I've got one, two, three screws here and then a bunch across the top. Uh, if I hit on the stud, then I'm okay. If not, I use these expanding drywall anchors that they include. So, let's put them up. So this was a super fun project for me. I got a chance to learn some new skills and try out some new techniques. I'd never built cabinets before, so this was quite the challenge for me. It was a lot of little projects spread over a long period of time. 
Unfortunately, my wife wasn't really happy that it took me two and a half months to complete this project. If you haven't had a chance to check out part one of this series, I'll have a link right up in here. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, put those down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you subscribe, hit the bell for notification. I've got some videos over here you may be interested in. Subscribe button's right over here. Thanks for watching. Dad it yourself.